Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about tips on how you can get your first entry level job in cybersecurity. So I know there's a lot of videos and articles out there saying that there's so many jobs in cybersecurity and that employers are having a hard time filling all of those cybersecurity roles. And while that is 100% true, a lot of those roles do tend to be for more experienced cybersecurity roles. And a common question I get often in my comments is what advice is there for people who are just starting to get into cybersecurity and are more on the entry level side where they may not have any actual work experience yet and they're really just starting to add cybersecurity skills to their resume. So I'll be going over different resources for how you can get your first entry level job in cybersecurity to help along with your job search. Okay, so first tip I have for you guys on this list is certifications. So I know not everyone has honestly the time to study for a certification, especially if you're already grinding and studying for cybersecurity interviews or tech interviews in general, or maybe you currently have another full-time job or you have things in your personal life or you're in school full-time or in a boot camp. There's so many other things outside of the job search that may be taking up your time. But I really do think that a cybersecurity certification can be a very good option for you when it comes to getting your foot in the door for a lot of cybersecurity jobs. Cybersecurity is probably one of the biggest fields in tech that are really looking for certifications when it comes to when it comes to the different jobs that they have. Because let's face it, the security sector is, is really one of those sectors that cares about certifications and all the ISO, SOC 2, and security clearance things that people care about as credentials because there may be other auditors or potential customers or clients that ask about the credentials of your cybersecurity team. And most companies are gonna want their cybersecurity professionals to have at least one well-known certification on their resume. And I'm not saying you have to go out there and just start with your CISSP or your OSCP certification. If you're just starting as an entry-level person, I will be making a video soon on the top cybersecurity certifications for beginners, but typically, the A plus network plus security plus which is the one that I have all these are great options if you're a beginner and I'll put a quick googled list of top cybersecurity beginner certs on the screen but if you're already studying for cybersecurity interviews then you kind of might as well study for a cybersecurity certification because you're most likely studying similar topics and it'll just be really helpful to have that certification under your belt to really give your resume a boost when you're applying for cybersecurity jobs against other potential candidates who also may have certifications. And I did want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is Dice.com, where tech connects you to your dream job in tech. Dice.com is the perfect place to find your next job in tech that aligns with your values and skills. On Dice.com, you can easily search tech jobs, browse different insights on tech careers, boost your career, as well as easily access all their latest features on the Dice app. One of my favorite things about Dice.com is that they have different articles and ebooks that really help you take the lead on your career. And even outside of the job search portal, there's also specific articles about tech salaries, as well as ebooks including the ultimate guide to a successful tech career that has everything from acing your interview, improving your networking skills, negotiating your salary at your current organization, finding a mentor, maximizing your salary, as well as improving your soft skills and working on long-term goal setting for your career. Their newest ebook, Optimizing Your Tech Career, has also recently launched and you can check that out in the link in the description. And one of the best things about these reports is that Dice.com surveys actual individuals who are in tech careers themselves and asks them everything from salary to their core benefits from PTO to how satisfied they feel with their current salary and everything in between. It really is an inside look at the tech sector in general. And it also tells you some really good facts about which roles are having the most salary growth Fun fact, cybersecurity is one of the highest ones on this list with a 16% average salary growth from 2020, which is very significant. Dice.com also has an insights website where they share different articles about tech careers on topics like going through your job search in a turbulent economy, what interview questions to expect during the great resignation, as well as even articles about salary ranges. So you can really find an abundance of knowledge and information that you can use to your advantage, whether it's looking for jobs, negotiating your salary at your current organization, or in a new company that you're applying to, as well as the best ways to just grow in general in your career and get the hard and soft skills needed for your career trajectory. So if you're someone who is currently looking for their next job in cybersecurity, Dice.com is an awesome resource to use for your job search. You can click on the link in my description for more information to find your next dream cybersecurity job. 
Alright, next topic I wanted to cover is resume databases. So if you're currently on the job market, you've probably tried career portals, career sites, as well as even different career fairs in person that you may go to. And nowadays virtual career fairs are also becoming very popular. But one option that I don't hear that many people talking about is resume databases. And this is a little bit different from your LinkedIn profile or your profile on a career website. But basically it is exactly what it sounds like. A career site or some kind of conference site will set up a database or just a place for potential candidates to be able to upload their resumes, share maybe a little bit about themselves, and then recruiters can then go through their database, search for whatever skills, experience, education that this candidate might have, and then reach out directly if there is a match in the skill sets for a specific job that the recruiter is hiring for. Because sometimes it may be more upfront work for you to create a profile, add a cover letter, write out a new description, upload a photo, add all of your skills, basically all the fields that are needed for a standard career profile. But sometimes you may just want to upload your resume and then have recruiters reach out to you directly based on the skills and the experience that you put on your resume. The resume database that I used while I was in college as well as in my early career was through the Grace Hopper Conference, which is a very well-known conference for women in tech. And even if you don't go to the conference, they have a they have a resume database that is open to everyone and anyone can upload their database and any of their partner companies can go on there and search for different candidates and then just be able to contact you ask you for an interview things like that so that's one of the easiest easiest ways to get recruiters to reach out to you directly rather than you going to them and while i was on the job search a few months ago when i was looking for my new job i actually had two of the offers that i got were actually from companies that reached out to me from this resume database and that was something that i put my resume into maybe four or five months ago so it really is just like a set it and forget it easy kind of thing that you can do just while you're applying to jobs still online and in person of course you still want to be proactive about your job search rather than just waiting but it is just an extra plus or something extra on your side to get more recruiters reaching out to you for potential jobs at specific companies all right next thing on this list is doing your research for the jobs that you specifically want to get into so i know as someone who is entry level in cybersecurity, there's so many different ways that you can take your career and it kind of can be hard to decide which route you want to go into whether it's red team blue team and everything in between but for whatever job it is even if you're joining as a standard cybersecurity analyst or soc analyst even for those roles there may be new skills that you want to get into that'll kind of give you an idea of what roles you want to get into in the future for example network prevention or network security or threat intelligence there's so many different ways you can pivot your career even if you're first starting as a cybersecurity analyst so you always want to do your research on the specific job that you want to get into and look into the different skills tools that the team to use technologies they use and maybe even try to get some free experience or look into some information online on how you can get some hands-on experience in that tool if you don't already have that experience and i really do think technology and the internet makes doing research like this so much easier because if your dream job for example is being a security analyst at a big tech company that you can probably look up that exact role at whatever tech company you want to get into and it will give you a list of the technologies they use and all the cybersecurity tools and skills that you may need to learn for you to have a good chance in passing that interview and getting hired. So really the world is at your fingertips when it comes to doing your research and it's probably one of the number one things you can do as part of your job search. Next thing on this list is resumes and cover letters. So I do have my resume and cover letter templates shared in my cybersecurity career resources link in the description below. But obviously your resume and your cover letter are really are really your best foot forward to recruiters and potential employers. And you definitely want your resume to be a good reflection of your skills, your experience, and your education. And I know there are options out there for you to, you know, meld your resume to every specific role that you apply to. Honestly, that is going to be very time consuming and tiring, but I will say maybe for the top few jobs that you are really interested in, you can make your resume specifically tailored to that job. But for the most part, you're probably just going to keep one main version of your resume that you apply to most of the cybersecurity jobs that you're interested in. And if you don't have any formal experience, you want to make sure that you're adding actual hands-on experience from cybersecurity projects, hack the box, try hack me's, 
capture the flags that you've done, a list of cybersecurity skills and tools that you know and have used, even coding language that you scripted in or done some kind of automation or have a good grasp on. And then in terms of your cover letter, I know not every job is going to ask for a cover letter, but some do and sometimes it's required, sometimes it's not. Cover letters I definitely think can make or break you, especially because they are literally like a letter to your potential future employer and it shouldn't just be a repeat of your resume to the T but I do think that it's important to kind of add in some hints of your experience as well as how passionate you are about the potential job that you're interested in for example you can share about your experience in your previous roles or your education or your boot camp or just in general why you think that you're a good fit for this specific role and it really is there to kind of give the recruiter an inside look on how you present yourself along with your resume as well as proving how interested you are in this specific role. Alright, next thing I wanted to discuss is, is getting into a cybersecurity bootcamp. So there may be some of you guys already watching who are already graduating from bootcamp and in the job search, but for those of you who aren't or are potentially switching from other sectors that aren't in technology that are from a completely separate field or sector outside of technology and cybersecurity, I really do think that a bootcamp is a potentially very good way to get your foot in the door because you may be someone who doesn't have the hard skills needed for cybersecurity roles and a bootcamp can give you exactly that which is something to put on your resume that shows that you can do the hands-on work and that this is something that you're actually interested in. I've made lots of different videos on choosing the best bootcamp for you, whether or not cybersecurity bootcamps are worth it, as well as the top seven bootcamps in cybersecurity. I don't know if all those videos will be live by the time I post this video but I can link any of those videos down below if you're interested in checking those out. But I do think that a bootcamp is a very good short-term way to kind of get your foot in the door to understand what skills you may need on the job. And it also really helps you consider whether or not cybersecurity is actually the best sector for you to go into and if this is the career that you want to go for. Plus, it's much cheaper than college and a lot less time consuming. There are bootcamps out there that are three months, six months, a year compared to the typical two to four years for an associate's and a bachelor's degree. So it's definitely a very good option if you're someone who is really trying to make a serious switch from whatever sector that you're coming from into cybersecurity. And the last topic I want to discuss in this video is making sure that you're keeping up with, with cybersecurity job market trends. So I know during times of uncertainty where there may be articles about layoffs and things like that, you definitely want to make the best decision for you for how you want to move your career, which companies you want to apply for, and when you want to make that switch in your career. So keeping up with the job market trends of what jobs are hiring the most for and what companies may be doing layoffs, what companies are still hiring even during these turbulent times. These are all trends that you want to keep track of because you don't want to be left in the dark when you're just shooting darts and applying to hundreds of different job postings. You still want to do your research on the potential companies that may be good for you as well as the roles that are a good fit for you. Dice.com also has many different articles on their insights page that shares job market trends just like these. So I'll definitely check those out as well for anyone who is currently looking for their next cybersecurity job. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Definitely be sure to check out Dice.com for all of your cybersecurity job listings, articles about salary, negotiation, certifications, finding a mentor, and everything in between. Thank you so much to Dice.com for sponsoring today's video. And if you guys found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. Feel free to drop any future video topics that you might want to see from me in the comments below. And of course, be sure to join our Discord channel to join our cybersecurity community. And hopefully, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!